Hey guys, today I'm going to reveal to you the hidden cause behind everything. Everything that exists and every event that happens. This is something that most people do not understand at all. And this video is probably going to challenge some very fundamental beliefs that you have about how the world operates. So if you are not willing to accept that, then I recommend that you stop watching now. But on the other hand, if you can understand the concepts that I'm about to share with you and apply them, your life will change so fast that your head's going to spin. So now that you've been warned, let's jump into it. Now, the first concept to understand is that there are in nature two separate realms. There are two separate realms of nature that interact with each other. And most people only recognize one. That's called the realm of effects. But there's also another realm of nature called the realm of causes. And so the realm of effects is the realm of the physical. Right? These are the things that we see, the uh, events that unfold. However, behind the physical, there is the spiritual. In the world of causes. And even most people who claim to be spiritual have no idea how this works. The realm of effects is the realm of the seen. The realm of causes is the realm of the unseen. The realm of effects is the realm of matter and events. Whereas the realm of causes is the realm of spirits and thought forms. Now everything that is within the realm of effects, everything that we observe, Every object, every event, uh, every action comes from the realm of causes. There is no effect without a cause. So the realm of causes creates the realm of effects. And this is something that mainstream science is, is only just beginning to put its finger on. It's only just starting to recognize this in action. So I'll give you some examples that are already well accepted. So for example, we know that stress causes ulcers, right? If you have stress, which is something intangible, it's a, a feeling, it's a thought form, it exists in the world of causes, it creates a very real, very tangible effect that can be measured by a doctor on the world of effects, which is a stomach ulcer. Another one, we know that faith creates healing. This is what we call the placebo effect. If you have faith in your heart, faith being unseen, faith being an energy that comes from your spirit, creates physical, measurable healing here in the realm of effects. Here's another one we recognize. Will creates action, right? If I have the will to do something, and then I do it, right? So I have the will to raise my hand, and I raise my hand. So the will is something that exists in the spiritual realm. My consciousness, my spirit, decided that I wanted to raise my hand, and then the physical, material body that my consciousness controls moves. Right? It's a physical action on the realm of effects that comes from the will that comes from the realm of causes. Here's another one that's a little bit more recent discovery is that observation creates or rather causes energy to condense into matter. If you ever read about the uh, double slit experiment in particle physics, this is what they call the observer effect, that whether light behaves like a wave, like energy, or like a particle, depends on whether or not there is a conscious observer. So again, because observation creates the effect that the uh, physical matter behaves differently. So it's very clear that this is true. But we're only just beginning to understand it. And there are going to be many, many more causes and effects that probably science will figure out in the future, but we have not figured out yet. Now, there are two approaches 
to this knowledge. There is one that's called science and one that's called religion. And they approach it in two different ways, but ultimately they're studying the same subject matter. And in the future, when we have a perfect science and we have a perfect religion, the two are going to harmonize completely. There will be no difference between the perfect science and the perfect religion because they will both be describing exactly the same truth. So if you think about it, religious morality is just an, a practical application of this, right? It's a, a recognition that if you do good in the realm of causes, you will reap what you sow, right? That you will get good things in the realm of effects, that doing good always results in good consequences to you, even if you can't understand the mechanism by which it happens. And of course the opposite is true. So if you do evil deeds, then you are creating negative energy in the world of causes. That negative energy is going to create negative results in the world of effects. And the religions have been telling you about some of these things, by the way. For example, uh, about stress. Jesus says, Worry not for the concerns of tomorrow, right? Don't stress out about the future. Why? Because stress is a negative impetus in the world of causes that is going to create a negative outcome in the world of effects. Uh, with faith healing people, Jesus said that, uh, you know, a mustard seed of faith can move mountains, that the faith that exists on the spiritual plane creates physical effects on the, uh, the, the plane of effects. And that reminds me in particular of there is a story in the Bible where there is a, a woman who is sick. Uh, I don't remember the exact details. A woman that has some physical ailment. And she thinks, if I can just touch the hem of Jesus' robe, then I will be healed. And so she gets close enough in the crowd to touch Jesus' robe, and then Jesus turns around and says, who touched my robe? And the woman says, it was me. And Jesus says, woman, your faith has healed you. Right? I love how he says, your faith has healed you. He doesn't say, I healed you. He doesn't say, I performed a miracle and now you are healed. No, he says, your faith has healed you. Jesus knew that faith creates healing. So if you sow positive seeds in the world of causes, you will reap positive benefits. And by the way, we have the ability to feel what we're sowing in this land of causes, right? We have the ability to feel whether the energy that we are creating is either pos positive or negative. And this is something that we call our conscience, right? If we sow negative energy, our conscience feels bad. If we sow positive energy, our conscience makes us feel good. God gave us this inboard guidance system to tell us what every act and every thought and every feeling are doing to us on the land of, in the, the realm of causes before they create an effect. And this is why God's justice is perfect, right? Because it's a system. These are laws of nature. Right? They, they aren't really understood by science yet, but they'll get there eventually. But this is a law of nature, the automation that God created, that if you sow bad seeds, you reap bad fruit. If you sow good seeds, you reap good fruit. That's why God's justice is always perfect, because this is a system. This is a law of the universe. And so you might be able to do something evil in secret from human beings, but you're not going to escape the laws of the universe, right? That, the, the, you were not going to escape the consequences of the seeds you sown into the land of causes. And in fact, the one way that you can escape the consequences is by repenting and by asking for forgiveness. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Well, what does that mean? What is unrighteousness? Well, it's the negative energy that we have accumulated for ourselves in the world of causes. So if we will recognize that we did something wrong, that we created this negative energy for ourselves, we recognize it, we confess it, 
and we ask for forgiveness, then that negative effect, that negative cause rather, is erased. That negative energy is erased from the world of causes. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't have effects from it, right? So if you hurt somebody, for example, the damage has already been done. The, the effect has already happened. And so maybe that person's going to retaliate. Maybe you're going to get sent to jail, etc. Right? So you can erase the negative energy from the land of causes, but if the effect has already been done, then um, you may, the, the effect may be less severe, but you, you're probably not going to escape from it entirely. Another time that Jesus alluded to this, was when he was talking about committing sins in your heart. So he, I might, I might um, misquote this just a little bit, but, but I'll get the idea right. And that is that if you have anger against your neighbor, if you desire bad things to happen against your neighbor, you have committed a, a aggression against your neighbor in your heart. If you lust after your brother's wife or your neighbor's wife, then you have uh, created, that you have committed adultery in your heart. That's what Jesus said. So just the fact of having the thought forms. Now, again, thoughts are a, a real entity in the world of causes. Whenever you have a thought, that creates something in the world of causes, which is necessarily going to come up to the world of effects one way or another. And so Jesus is not saying that uh, you only have to not commit murder, but you can fantasize about it as much as you want, or you have to not commit adultery, but you can desire it as much as you want. No, you have to control your thoughts. You have to control the thought forms that you are creating, even in the world of causes. Now, that's not to say that the two are equivalent. That's not to say that thinking about murdering somebody is as bad as actually murdering them. Right? That's going to, if you actually commit the act, that's going to um, create a whole lot more negative energy in the land of causes that will create more negative results in the land of effects than if you simply think about it. But simply thinking about it, simply having thoughts of anger, of hatred, uh, of, of lust towards another man's wife, you are creating negative energy here in the land of causes. You are creating thought forms that are going to come back to bite you one way or another here in the land of effects. So here's another one. Thoughts create things. You ever heard that, that expression, thoughts become things, or thoughts become actions? Right? Many times before you take an action, you think about it, right? You rehearse it in your mind and then you take the action. The thought, given enough force, given enough repetition, eventually becomes an action. Other application, the, when God created the universe, he said, let there be light, and there was light, right? So the word of God became light, became energy, became matter as God spoke things into existence. Well, how did God speak things into existence? Well, this is how. Because everything on the world of effects, everything, including matter, including energy, came from, initially, some cause in the world of causes. So, God's word creates the thing, creates the energy, creates the matter. Uh, similarly, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Right? So the Word, again in the land of causes, becomes flesh. The Word of God, and when, when it says Word, a Word is the same as a thought, right? A Word is just a, a spoken manifestation of a thought. So the Word of God became the man Jesus Christ. The cause in the realm of the spiritual became a physical body, right? This is the system, this is the scientific mechanism behind everything that religion teaches. So when you understand this, you have enormous power. You have the ability to 
influence the world of effects because you know where the cause lies. If you don't understand that, you're, you're just trying to beat up a brick wall, right? You're, you're trying to uh, create effects purely using the world of effects. And so that's why a lot of people are frustrated, a lot of people are angry, a lot of people can't figure out how to improve their lives because they don't know anything about the world of causes. And I actually believe that, that it is that way for a reason, that a lot of people who understand this do not want other people to understand it because they like having the knowledge that gives them power over the people who are stuck up here and don't know what they're doing, right? And so that's a, a video for another day. But anyway, if you can understand this, then this is going to make enormous changes in your life. So let me tell you about how you can practically apply this, how you can use this world of causes to work for your benefit, to create the sort of effects in your life that you desire. What you have to do is discipline your thoughts. This is the main thing. Your thoughts are what you have control over in the world of causes. So when you're thinking hateful thoughts, when you're thinking angry thoughts, when you're thinking shameful thoughts, stop yourself, redirect your thoughts to something that is going to create good energy down here and create good results up here. Because your anger and your depression and the, your, your self-guilt, all of the things that you're thinking down here is going to create negative effects up here. And by the way, when I say guilt, um, guilt serves a purpose, right? Just like anger serves a purpose and fear serves a purpose. It's to get you to recognize something. In the case of guilt, it's to get you to recognize that you have done something wrong, that there's something wrong that you have to correct, right? So you correct the thing. You figure out what is the thing that you did wrong. You correct it, and then you can dispense with the guilt. You don't need it anymore. So think good thoughts. If you will think good thoughts, then you will speak good words. You will do good actions. You will create nothing but good energy for yourself, which will manifest for you in the world of effects. If you want more specifics about how to do this, go read the words of Jesus. Read the book of Matthew. It'll take you like two hours. It's short. And make note of all of the commands and the suggestions that Jesus gives you. Right? All of the things to do, all of the things not to do. Don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, don't uh, say insult your neighbor. Um, don't lust after your neighbor's wife. Do love everybody, including your enemies. Do do charity for people. Do forgive people who sin against you. Right? All of those things are going to create wonderful energy down here, which is going to create good results up here. Another resource you might find helpful is a short document that I created called the Eight Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment, which I, you can get for free. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in that. It's like just a few pages, but it's habits that will get you into this habit of thinking and feeling in a way that create it on the this level of causes that creates good things and the level of effects. Or if you really want to understand this at a deeper level, you want to understand what, how this spiritual realm works, how this realm of causes works, then a book that I highly recommend, I'm, I'm just finishing reading myself, is called Into the Unseen by Leon Denis. This really, really fascinating book because it's written uh, from the perspective of a scientist in the early 1900s. And it's just mind-blowing to me because this spiritual realm of nature, and again, this is part of nature. This is part of the natural laws. Back then, science studied this extensively. There are tons of, of volumes of uh, research articles, of research journals written about the scientific workings of the spiritual world. This was mind-blowing to me because science now has completely rejected this, right? They've just thrown it out. They stopped studying it. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that scientific research is almost entirely monopolized by a few financial interests, 
right? It's, it's either the government or some giant corporation that is funding all of it, and neither of those entities has any desire to advance this particular line of research for the public. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they are researching it for their own use, such as Hitler was doing during World War II, such as Operation, um, I forget the name, the, the CIA was, was studying telepathy and this kind of stuff uh, for military use, right? They don't want us to know it to make our lives better, but if they can use it to kill more people, then they'll be happy to study it. But anyway, before I go off on another rant, yeah, if you really want to understand this, I highly recommend that book, Into the Unseen by Leon Denise. And then if you enjoyed this video, if you found this thought provoking, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please hit the thumbs up or the like button on whatever platform you are because it makes the algorithm like me better. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell icon so you're the first to get all my new videos. Share this video with anybody else who you think would find it interesting or who would benefit from it. And then if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really like this video all about how your focus creates the results that you get in your life. It, it fits in very well with this framework and gives you some practical exercises that you can do to make this work for you.